We're live. What is this, Lady Ada? Hello, everybody. It's a lovely Wednesday evening, and it's time for show and tell. This is our favorite time of the week. It's when you, the viewer, the maker, the hacker, the dreamer of dreams, comes onto this show, and you show us what you're up to. What are you making? What are you crafting? What are you soldering or sewing? We would like to see it. Yeah. And uh, so would everyone else. So Over the weekend, we watched 300 episodes of Show and & Tell. And thank you, everyone out there who shows up every week. It was a delight to see um, a lot of uh, young people um, go off and do things and then come back on the Show and & Tell. And for us, just to age before your eyes. So um, good to see you. All right, Scott, okay. what you got? Check it off. Hi. Uh, I've been working on playing Wave Files with the upcoming Circuit Playground. So once again, I will spoil it some hardware that people do not have yet. But uh, let me uh, reset here, and you should be able to hear it. That sounds good. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. I'm still working out some bugs, uh, but I thought it was fitting to play Circuit Playground music from a Circuit Playground. Um, That's cool. Yeah. So I've got bugs, but uh, it's a start for sure. And then I just wanted to quickly give a shout out. Also, I just got this board. It looks like a Metro, but it's not a Metro. What it is is it's the, it's the RISC-5 mm -hmm. microcontroller board from Sci-5. They call it the Hi-5, and it's the Arduino layout, but it's got their RISC-5 hardware on it. So I'm going to play around with that when I get a chance to. Uh, so just thought I'd give them a shout out. All right, thank you so much. I look forward to the next time you visit where you can have a Circuit Playground saying, playing Circuit Playground and be on the show Circuit Playground. Yeah, we should uh, schedule that. Let's do it. All right. Next up, Circuit. I'm Pedro. Hey, what's up, guys? So this week, uh, we finally came out with this project. Um, I've been playing a lot of Zelda Breath of the Wild, and I got this Guardian Sword. I got a lot of Guardian Swords. When I first found them, I was like, man, I really want to make this. So I wasn't able to make it because I was working on a box, but Pedro had some cycles and he put it together. So, so here it is. So Whoa. it is about 34 inches. It's um, just has a trinket inside and the cylindrical battery and the LiPo backpack to handle the charging. So you have the port on the bottom here so you can easily recharge or reprogram it. And then we're just using the Neo or the skinny mini NeoPixel strips inside here. And it's about six pieces. And the cool thing about it is that it's all held together with M2 screws. Um, some of the project, uh, uh, props that we've done before, like the Halo Energy Sword back there, it was all held together with like glue, so you really couldn't go around and like swing it around and like actually go into battle with it. So <laughs> nice and sturdy, you can take it apart. So if you're like traveling to a con, you can um, take all the screws out and compact it till about like six by six inches. So um, nice and compact to take around with you. And it's about two pounds. It's pretty sturdy, so it could actually do some damage. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Using the translucent filament. And uh, a couple of tips uh, in the video um, that we use the uh, blue painter's tape to make it more diffused. Um, you can't really see it in the video, but if you're just using a glass heated bed, it's gonna show a bunch of hot spots where all the new pixels are. But when you print it with a, a printing surface, it'll give you that nice matted um, diffused uh, look to it. So yeah. a couple more tips. Uh, of course, we released the, uh, all the Fusion 360 files. So you can modify it yourself. You can cut it up if you have a smaller printer and um, yeah, check out the learning guide. It's got the full uh, assembly instructions on how to yeah. put it together. So, I'll yeah, we, like we got you this for your birthday. I didn't realize you had one already. Darn <laughs> <laughs> Cool. All right, back to the drawing board. Um, we'll be playing that video uh, tonight. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks. Thank you. All right, sweet project. All right. Aaron, hey, hello, Aaron. Aaron. What you got? Hi, um, I'm Aaron St. Blaine. Hi, everybody. Um, I am here just to show off my, uh, my up to date, new, uh, new and improved uh, chakra hoodie. I made a guide for this uh, a few months ago, um, and then I've been wearing it. I'm a, a light dancer and hula hooper. I've been wearing it out to gigs, and I kept breaking it because I tried to hula hoop in it, and it had all these buttons just right along the front, and they just kept breaking. So I needed to kind of revamp it so that it was a little bit more useful for the kind of use that I that I use it for. <laughs> um, so I have, uh, have it right here. I've installed a control button on the front. I'm going to see if I can make it a little darker in here. That's cool. I have a control button on the front. Um, 
that I, it's one of these brand new little uh, teeny tiny steampunky looking metal pushy buttons. I don't know if you can see that or not, but um, it makes me very happy because it kind of goes with the look of the hoodie a little bit. And um, what I've been doing is designing, I, I put some, some LED strips in the front and I have individual pixels on the back on the little tail, which is doing fun stuff too, and then LEDs all along the hood. I believe there is something like uh, 159 pixels in this hoodie now, which is very exciting. Yeah. Um, the button cycles through different modes. So uh, I've coded a whole bunch of different uh, modes using fast LED. Um, and the, what, my uh, reasoning behind the, the way I'm doing the modes is uh, I'll go out to a gig and uh, let's say it's a, a winter wonderland themed gig, which means that people want my lights to be in blue. So one of the first modes I have on here is a rainbow mode, and it will slowly cycle through the rainbow. And then whichever color I stop it on, then the next few modes are going to grab that hue and keep it. And so like winter wonderland, I'll stop it here. I have a solid blue. And then I go and I have a gradient blue, and I have some twinkle blues, and I have a bunch of modes that are based on whatever that hue color is. If I want to get a different palette, then I just cycle around back to that rainbow shift mode, and then I can uh, have the next, you know, change everything to green, which is pretty fun. Um, and it's really striking. People really love it a lot. So it's, uh, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, the next thing I'm going to end up doing with this is I want to add a timer code to it. So what I'm going to do is uh, I have an LED light show where I use my Supernova Poi and my POV props. And they're all timed to the music. So the image shows up at a certain point in the music. I use like the pink song, Just Like Fire. And every time she says the word fire, the fire appears on the boy. Um, it's really uh, simple sounding, but it's really effective. And so what I want to do is to uh, put timing on the hoodie as well, so that when uh, it says Just Like Fire in the song, then the fire will show up on the hoodie as well as on the boy. So the whole thing, the costume and the props will be a little more integrated. So that's where I'm going with this. And it's been super fun. Well, it's like the most, right. that's like the most advanced, that, that hoodie's more advanced than like Apollo 11 or something. It's awesome. Very cool. Very cool to look at. Thank you so much. That's a really neat project. Next up. Chris. Oh, we normally um, send out a sticker, but Aaron does work with us. But Aaron, you can have a sticker if you want. You have stickers, right? Yeah. I'll see. You. <laughs> All right. Next up, Chris Young. How are you doing, Chris? Hey, Chris. Mm -hmm. Can we okay? Yep. yep. Okay. Uh, first thing I noticed is, the Hangout tour bar is back again. Yeah. Google Hangouts. You can see I got my my URL down there yep. on the screen. I've been able to do that for months. I just noticed it today. Uh, anyway, I've been working on trying to translate my IR library into Circuit Python. And for a guy that's written mostly C and C for the past twenty years and has only ever written one other Python program in his life, uh, this has really been a, a mind-bending experience uh, to try to shift your brain into a different mode. Um, like Python's version of what they think is global is much different than what I think global is. <laughs> and then it's the annoying little things, like true and false, have to be capitalized instead of not capitalized. But I've been getting lots of help from Tony and and from Scott, they've been swapping emails with me and helping me out. And hats off to them. They've been a really great, really good support. And I've got two protocols done for receiving. Uh, it's going to be a slow process. We're already running into some memory issues. So it's we're not going to be able to learn all protocols at once. But hopefully I can make it modular enough that you can just load the protocols that you actually need. And it'll still be... I fit in the memory restraints. It kind of reminds me back of when I was in college, my my professor, uh, Dr. John Gerstein, he handed us the textbook for his class and said, go teach yourself the course. He <laughs> says, I'm not going to stand up here and lecture you out of the book. He wrote the book, by the way. <laughs> and he says, I'm not, not going to lecture you. You can read the book yourself. He says, some people lecture to supplement the book. But if there was something you needed to know, I would have put it in the book in the first place. <laughs> he says, the real reason is, the minute, the minute that you walk out the door 
in this university, everything we have taught you is going to be obsolete. <laughs> you're going to get a job somewhere, and the first thing you're going to do is plop down a stack of users' manuals about three feet thick in front of you and say, learn this. And he says, so I'm not going to teach you programming. I'm going to teach you to teach yourselves programming. Oh, wow. And, that's what he did. and so that lesson that I learned 40 years ago from Dr. Gerstein is serving you well today because I'm having to teach myself Python with the help of some friends. But uh, hats off to Dr. G. I, I just got in touch with him a couple of months ago by email, and he remembered me. And we, we did a lot of reminiscing. So I was thinking of him today. That's all I got to report on now. When I got something really, you know, it's really done to share. I'll put up some links and uh, and really demonstrate it. But for now, it's just a work in progress. All right. Well, thanks so much, Chris. Um, I'm not going to send you a sticker because I have those boards that um, you wanted. So those will be going out uh, tomorrow or Friday. So um, expect something in the mail probably Friday. OK, no rush. I'm, I'm keeping busy with ours. I got more boards than I know what to do with right now. All right. No, just kidding. I'm going to send you. I'm going to send you a stack of user manuals and a bunch of books. Okay. <laughs> this thick. That's the doctor guy told me to do that now. All right, All right Chris. Thank you so much. Well, users manuals. Who prints books anymore? Yeah, yeah. exactly. PDFs. It'll be a. It'll be a USB drive with PDF. <laughs> All right. Okay. Next up. Hey, Claire. How's it going, Claire? Show us your project. Hey, Claire. Hi guys. Hey. All right. So my project is. Let me see if it's oh, switching. Whoa. All right. So this is. I ended up making a light up prom dress. Um. So I used Zeta Fruit Flora and um six NeoPixels. This was my first time doing a wearables project, so I decided to hack my prom dress for senior prom, and this is what it turned out to be. Wow, that's amazing. That so you have a flora, and then you have a strip of NeoPixels, or like, did you sew them in? I actually sewed each little NeoPixel light um, onto the dress. OK. Well, it's beautiful. I love the pink and the blue. I love the contrasting colors. Um, you know, after the prom is over, I mean, you can wear it every day, but are you going to do more wearable projects? Do you have other ideas? Oh, I'm definitely going to be doing more wearable projects because I was actually thinking of trying to do the motion sensor, the accelerometer and compass with the stress, but it, I had a lot of issues with the accelerometer. Um, like the code would work, but the actual accelerometer, when I sewed it in, didn't work. So I kind of scrapped that and just made it light up and do a series of light ups because prom's on Friday. So I'm like. <laughs> Something like a deadline. <laughs> <laughs> well, it looks beautiful. And uh, if you take any photos at prom and you'd like to share them with the community, I think I'd, I'd love to see them. Yeah. And email support at adafruit.com and we'll send you out an as seen on the show and tell sticker. It'll probably be the only prom dress that has it as seen on the show and tell sticker. <laughs> Would you like to see it with the lights off? Yeah, sure. Sure. Oh, wow. Ooh. That's cool. Not only do you have the coolest prom dress, but the safest as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I love it. Good work, Claire. Good work, Claire. Have a fun time at prom. Thanks. <laughs> OK, next up, uh, Sai. Hey, Sai. Hey, Sai. I'm here. Mike, you show us your project. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. So I uh, built this visual aid um, to motivate myself to be physically active. Um, it consists of a Pimeroni RGB LED strip that's interfaced to a uh, Raspberry Pi Zero. Um, the Raspberry Pi Zero collects the steps logged by my Fitbit tracker, and it lights up a green LED, uh, or rather it lights up green in color for every 1,375 steps it wa I walk. I'm planning to add a buzzer to this so that I can remind myself every hour to like walk around. Uh, so that and it's been really helpful to actually like um, to know that um, I haven't been walking around throughout the day and that I need to you know be more physically active. Yeah. Awesome. Well, it's great, and you know it's cool because you put so much time and effort into building this project. 
um, you're going to do what it says because you're like, why did I build it if I'm not going to do it? You know, it's like yeah. it's easy to just buy something and put it on your wrist, but when you actually put time and effort, it makes your mind. I feel like it makes your mind concentrate on the task. So yeah, yeah, uh, and I, I really love it so far. <laughs> All right. Well, congratulations. What a cool Thank project. You. Email support at Adafruit will send you a Ash and Show and Tell sticker. You could put it on there and uh, come back in a couple months and tell us whether you've been walking and running marathons. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Good work. All right. Thank congratulations. You. Nice work, Sai. Next up, John. John, unmute your mic and show us your hat. <laughs> Dude, that hat's so cool. Yeah. Oh, my God. It's lighting up. All right. Yes. Good afternoon. Um, yeah, I picked up this Fez a few weeks ago at Silicon Valley Comic Con. And the moment I saw it, I fell in love with it. But my second thought was, this needs lights. <laughs> so I spent figuring out how to do it, both for coding wise, as well as wiring it up and worrying about things like how much power it's going to eat and such like that. And first time I turned it on to check it for how long it would last, my phone charger turned itself off after about 10 seconds. And I was like, wait, what's going on? And it turns out this thing has such a low power draw that I put a 1200 milliamp hour LiPro on it and left it run all night. Mm -hmm. And it was still going in the morning when I left for work. And my wife says, well, it, last time I noticed it was about noon. So it ran for about 16 hours before wow. it ran out of juice. That's great. That means you can put it on the morning, wear it to work, come back, wear it around your family. <laughs> yes. You only have to take um, it off when you sleep. <laughs> <laughs> well, well it's it's so warm, especially with the wires and such. I'm still not quite done, but everything sort of all fits up in here. And once I get the Gemma hardwired in, let me see if I can show it it's just going to be this and the lipo battery and not the alligator clips that are temporarily on there and it's all running on gemma with a ton of space left over so i could have it doing more functional stuff but i was sort of pushing my um limits of my current coding ability and i will admit i liberally stole from um what's the name of the site the um JW Hendy website, who has a lot of tutorials on using fast LED, which one of my coworkers turned me on to because I was talking to him about what I wanted to do. And he's like, oh, fast LED has this fade to black function. And that's how it's getting the trails happening, that it's um, just dimming it down one quarter each pass through the, the loop so that I touch one, turn it on to, I think it's at only 36 points of brightness to start with, and then it drops down four each time. Very cool. And they loop back and forth. And turned out all I had to do was connect the two wires in parallel for the signal, and they run in parallel, and I just don't worry about the shorter strip on top. It just runs into the back and disappears into the holes in the back of the hat. Okay, right, well, you, your hat and you get a As Seen on the Show and Tell sticker, email support at adafruit.com, and we'll send you out one. All right, thank you. Thank you so much, John. The eye sees all. All right. <laughs> okay. Next up. That's the next step. Make it blink. <laughs> all right, next up, Dannon. Hey, Dannon. Dannon, I'm your mic and show us your project. Hello. All right. Um, hey, what's up? Me and my dad did a program for Spiro when it's a square. <clears throat> Whoa. <laughs> so you're learning how to drive a robot? Yeah. I'm also learning how to program it. Oh, that's cool. Because me and my dad did a right side square, a right side triangle. And right triangle. A right triangle and a normal triangle. And then, oh, so what? Doing, and then we tried doing the course, but except it what didn't kind of work out well. <laughs> so when the robot's driving, you're not controlling it. You just tell it to draw a square, and it draws the square? Mm -hmm. Show the program. We'll follow the phone up to the... Oh. So forward, right turn, forward, right turn. So it's... Turning and moving. Yep. 
Awesome. What's the next shape you want to have the robot draw? Mm, um, maybe like a circular oval. That'd be cool. Very cool. Well, you get a show and tell sticker, email support at adafruit.com, and you could pop probably put it on the ball but we'll see i have an advanced quest for you maybe in the next couple of weeks you can make it draw a heart oh, that's a good idea that's tough but after the circle in the oval i think you can do it all right like that yeah. Yeah. okay we need to give you homework all right come all back right. and show us what your robot when you get that work in okay okay next up we're going to go to orlando then we're going to wrap up with adam orlando let me your mic and show project hello there I'm actually not thinking that. I'm not sure if I showed you this already, but I did a little dance. That is an awesome goal. Uh, so this guy now would play his Space Invaders or Galaga. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that's the mood you're in. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it was supposed to yeah, be. Yeah, that's so cool. Smileys, but then I ended up playing games, and let's be honest, games are really fun. So yeah, this is what it does now. <laughs> so now I need to add more games. And Dude, also the awesome. Game. You're in a playful mood. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. I get it. So there yeah, that's go. what I'm. All right, well, um, we don't have a Space Invader badge yet or sticker yet. No, we need a game making one. We, we probably need a game, game making one. But either way, email support at you can get a scene on Show and Tell sticker. Sure, thank you. All right. Adam, you're here. This means that there was some capacitors replaced. Uh, there, was some there were some capacitors replaced. So the big progress this week is servicing the worst part of the microscope to service. It's my high voltage power supply. Uh, normally, this thing submerged in about five gallons of transformer oil, and then that stuff is just gross on every level. <laughs> um, I'll show you photos because the spot where I had to solder was absolutely horrible. Um, <laughs> <laughs> You're so happy for this. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> so let's see here. Um, Desoldering the capacitors is on the back of this board, and these standoffs are not coming out without me pulling out the flyback or the flyback supplies, and I don't want to pull out the flyback supplies, so the standoffs are staying where they are. So soldering joints um, with, with about two inches of clearance in there. Um, it was replacing. So what happens in oil is the rubber seals and electrolytic capacitors actually bulge up quite a bit, mm. and this is the one that's failed. This is actually internally shorted at about um, uh, what was it like a. Uh, Couple K ohm DC, so you shouldn't get DC going through a capacitor, which indicated this thing was dead. Um, I think that's where my excess power draw was from. Fixed that, got my new capacitors installed. Um, I had to uh, epoxy the tops of the capacitors because when you are submerging stuff in oil, um, if you just leave the uh, rubber tops on, the rubber tops will swell and you'll get oil or the wrong type of oil inside the electrolyte and bad things will happen. So Bunch of epoxy later, uh, got my capacitors installed, and then I keep finding dead parts. So now I'm starting to find that on everything, they really didn't over-spec anything. It's just right at the very edge of what they can get away with, and the instrument was in operation for 20-something years, so anything that was right on the edge of what they can get away with is now starting to burn out. So I'm just finding a lot of resistors and stuff that are starting to char a bit, but they're still sort of kind of in spec. So I'm going through and replacing a lot of that stuff because I think this thing kind of just uh, died by a thousand cuts. Um, it was it, it was excessive current draw that shut the power supply down, and I don't think it was any one thing that was causing that. I think it was just the collection of a bunch of really really old components. Just put that together and it doesn't work. Um, this is a better photo of what it's like to work on the inside of the high voltage supply. There's just this thing's built in a very three dimensional way, and there's just cables going everywhere. So that's kind of the life of this microscope at this point is finding dead components. All and right, a lot of progress. Yeah, progress. Um, it's it's in less. Uh, it's basically everything's been pulled apart now. So kind of got everything built, pulled it apart, and I'm expecting to have to do that at least two more times before I get this thing fully functional. Do you but have like hopefully... a schematic or something to follow, like test points, so you can like test the power supply, you know, part by part? Yeah. So I do have the full schematics for this thing, and it's something like forty different uh, sets of, or forty different pages. This thing is insane. And I do have the full chart of. Actually, I have it right here. I do have a full chart of what test points are supposed to look like. So they did give me. Uh, oh, that's good. good. So that's really good, but the, the difficulty is this thing is that I think I have an issue in my um, high voltage oscillator. So it's a 16 kilohertz oscillator, and it drives everything from the flybacks to the vacuum gauges. So anything that's ha is on some sort of frequency is based off of this oscillator. And until I can be certain that that thing's functional, it's kind of a risk powering anything else up because you can really, really quickly go outside specs on a lot of components. Mm -hmm. So. 
Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, you get a show and tell sticker. You're doing it. Thank you. And uh, keep up the good work and keep coming back. Yeah, keep um, doing it. As I was cataloging our show and tells for the last eight years, I once again thought about it. I can't wait to the arc of your project, not electric arc, but arc of your project is complete. Cause, uh, it hasn't happened yet. Yeah, because I'll be able to put that all together. And I, and I think it'll be neat to see kind of um, a time lapse of, of all this or even watching it. it might, it'll be interesting to see how many show and tell hours. I total. have, <laughs> yeah. It, it's, I mean, I'm, I'm really happy. I'm, I'm trying really hard to document this project fairly well just because it's so, there's so many different things and it's so yeah. involved. I keep on going back to photos I took of this thing at the very beginning to figure out, like, where was this screw actually at? I like the empathy you have for someone else one day um, <laughs> who's, who may need to do this. Yeah, yeah, no. I'm, I'm getting my website together right now. I'm getting all the documentation I have posted up there so anybody else who's got one of these <laughs> microscopes can use that sort of stuff. I all hope right. it goes on like instructables like page one out of 5,300. Right. <laughs> in the year 3,000, we'll need it and it'll be a hologram YouTube version. So it'll be good. All right. Well, thank you, Sai. Right, thank, thank you, Orlando. Thank you, Pedro. Thank you, John. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Chris. And thank you, Adam. We're here every single week, 7 30 p.m. Eastern Time. Show and tell. Best half an hour on the internet. Lady Ada, we're going to do Ask an Engineer now. Yes. Please join us in a few moments for Ask an Engineer. Bye bye. Thank you, everybody.